Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Chris. I'm an SRE here at Nutanix in the RTP site. Uh, we're here today because I want to talk to you about a little bit about Hyper-V networking, give you some pointers and give you some uh, tips and tricks that you can use in your own environment today. So first, let's talk a quick uh, bit about what's different between ESXi and Hyper-V since most people are familiar with ESXi at this point. The first big difference is there's no port groups. Uh, that means you've, that you don't configure port groups in Hyper-V like you do on ESXi, your connectivity and policy are done separately. Uh, as I said, connectivity and policy are done separately, so it's, something, it's a big, big difference. Teaming is not handled by the switch. In uh, ESXi, you're probably used to putting multiple NICs on the same switch and then setting the NIC teaming mode there. That's not how you do it in Hyper-V. In Hyper-V, the switch only defines how to connect upstream. Teaming is handled by the, uh, the LBFO driver built into Windows 2012. Um, so there's three different types of switches. The first kind is external. An external switch connects to a single NIC or a NIC team. Uh, a internal switch allows communication between the VMs and that host that the VMs are on. And finally, private only allows communication between the VMs on that host. So that's the biggest uh, thing to note with switches is that they only define how the VMs will connect to the upstream network, if at all. Finally, the v uh, VLAN is defined directly on the VM. Remember in ESXi, we create a port group for each different VLAN. Here, you do it directly on the VM. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I've pulled up Hyper-V Manager here. So here in Hyper-V Manager, I've added my hosts over here on the left. I've got some virtual machines running here on my HV4 host. If I go to one of the VMs here, and I do settings, um, as you see here, I have an ex a NIC adapter attached to external switch, and I've enabled VLAN identification. So you've got to enable the VLAN ID on each individual NIC on each VM. There's no way to do it globally with Hyper-V Manager. The other thing to note with Hyper-V Manager here is the Hyper-V Virtual Switch Manager over here on the right. If you click here, this will show you the switches that are present on that host. As you can see, I have an external switch and an internal switch. Uh, the external switch is to connect to the upstream network. The internal switch is for the CVM traffic between that and the Hyper-V host. Uh, and as you can see here, when I select external network, there's only a single NIC that I can select. I cannot put multiple NICs here. I can also enable a VLAN ID directly here on the uh, virtual switch. This will put that VLAN ID on the host OS. This will not prov provide it to any VM attached to the switch. So that, that's the first view. Hyper-V Manager is a great way to do a few hosts, and it's probably what you'll start with. However, once you start growing, we come into System Center. And System Center adds a whole other level of complexity on top of this. OK, so let's talk about the different components that go into an SCVMM network. At the core of it, at the core, we have the logical network. A logical network is a set of VLANs that share the same infrastructure. So one logical network could be for production, one logical network would be for DMZ. Based off the logical network, you've got the VM network. The VM network is what VMs connect directly to. Also based off the logical network, you have different network sites. Now a network site would be, for example, RTP, San Jose, Bangalore, or some other logical separation of your VLANs. So some hosts could be connected to network site A, but not network site B. Finally, you've got off the network sites, different VLANs and subnets. So these, this is where you define the different VLANs that belong to your network site, which belong to your logical network. When you configure your VMs for networking, there's two settings you need. The first, is what VM network it's using. The second is what VLAN it's using. Now there's another way you can do logical networks where you create one VM network for each VLAN. However, uh, the default way the Nutanix has it is one VM network per logical network. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Finally, the last piece to Hyper-V networking here is the hosts themselves. Each NIC connects to one or more logical networks. 
which tells Hyper-V which VM, uh, VLANs you can use on which hosts. So, say you have logical network B down here. You could move a VM from A to B, but not from A to C, because C does not have a connection to the logical network. Let's see what this looks like in SCVMM now. So I've opened up SCVMM here. The first thing you'll notice is that I have my failover cluster added here. So we want to take a look and see what a logical network looks like in SCVMM. So let's go over here to Fabric. Under Networking, you see I have all of these options. The first thing is a logical network. So I have a logical network defined here called external switch, which is the default logical network that Nutanix ships with. And I've, as you see, I've created an IP pool based off of this. Now this IP pool I've created because I need to assign IP addresses directly to my hosts. There's no other reason that I'm using this pool. If you right click on the external switch here, you can see under network site that I've added three VLANs. VLAN ID zero means that it's set native upstream and you don't need to tag it on the host. I also defined 3001 and 3008. These are used for other subnets that are not native upstream. So after defining the network site there, the next thing I need to do is go to my host, go to properties. Under hardware, I need to make sure that the NIC has the logical switch allowed on it. So as you can see here, I've got my net adapter team. Remember, everything's in a team. I am allowing the external switch, logical network, and these three uh, subnets off of it. So now that I have all those checked, I can go into my VMs here. This is the same VM that we were looking at before. This is just the SCVMM view of it. As you can see here, it's connected to external switch. It's got enable VLAN 3001. So if I wanted to put it on my native VLAN, I would simply uncheck this box and it, you see the VLAN clears. Uh, finally, if you look here at VM networks, you see the external switch. This is created by default and you don't need to modify this. However, if you created a new logical network, you would need to create a new VM network based off of it. So that's Hyper-V networking in a, in a nutshell, both from the Hyper-V manager view and SCVMM. If you go to the link below, you'll have a, there's a link to my blog where I have all of this condensed down to a single uh, data sheet that you can look at for quick reference. There's a lot that goes into it, and I would definitely recommend setting it up and testing it around in your own lab or environment. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.